So in this video, I wanted to take a quick look at a very cool, very popular pen, and that is the Pilot Custom 74. This is sort of one of the very popular upgrade pens. So, you know, you buy your Lamy Safari, what have you, and then you get into pens and you want to get your next step, maybe your first gold nib pen, and the Custom 74 is a very popular option. It sells for about 100 to $160, depending on the model you get. This is the gold trim with the uh, gold nib. So those go for about $100, $105, depending on where you get it. If you upgrade to the rhodinium or rhodium, rhodinium coating, then you will spend about $160 on this. Just to get into the pen, uh, resin body, gold covered or gold coated, Highlights, 14K, gold nib, you can see 14K, 585 right there, <clears throat> size 5, I bought it in the medium. It is a cartridge converter, pen, screw top. So let's get into how it arrives and we'll get back to the pen. Comes in a cardboard box from Pilot, very nice. And now we have a plastic jewel case or whatever you want to call it. Protects the pen in transit. Comes with some instructions. A little like seal of authenticity, whatever. And then a Con70 converter. This is like a high capacity push style converter. I don't love this one, but it's fairly popular. It's been around for a long time, I think. I've been using this pen with cartridges just out of laziness, but it does fit the Pilot Namiki cartridges. Looking at the body, we see it's very simple, super classic shape, <clears throat> no embellishments on the top. <clears throat> Sorry. No embellishments on the top or bottom. Pilot's standard, like sort of iconic clip with the ball at the end and the tapered shape. Cap band says made in Japan, star, custom 74, star, pilot. And then just some other highlights. It's a nice looking pen. I bought it in this navy blue, kind of an opaque, dull navy. Obviously it's glossy, but the color itself has very little pop to it. Kind of like something you would pair with a suit. A little bit on the dull side to my mind, which is kind of grayed out. But it has a nice classy look and I think it matches well with the gold. About one and a half turns to get the cap off. And we see nice looking 14K nib, nice taper there, some scrolling or just some metal work, whatever you want to call it. Plastic feed, nicely tapered section. I find the section to be very comfortable. It's not the largest, but it's got a nice size. And then some very low key uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. My throat is bothering me a little bit. And there's just like some nice low key screw parts here that you could barely even feel. Size wise, it's a very reasonable size. Feels good in the hand. It can post with just a friction sort of mount and the cap's very light. So this does not throw off the weight really, but it gives it extra length if you like longer pens. Unposted, I think it's a nice size pen little bit on the small side maybe, but definitely not bad. <clears throat> Here's a posted next to a, say a Sharpie for reference. Opening the pen up, you'd see while the entire outside is resin, you have uh, a little bit of metal on in here inside, which gives it a little bit of extra weight it just adds to the solid feeling of the pen. It does feel like a very well-built pen, even though it's very few metal parts. This is where you put your converter, or in this case, I have the cartridge. It's a Pilot Namiki uh, proprietary cartridge. Pops right in, fits well. Again, I'm a little bit lazy, but using the cartridges lately, they work out really well. So no complaints there. Screws down, nice fit. 
everything is very competently designed and very competently made. So this pen may not be super expensive. It just feels like Pilot really knows how to make these pens. They've made a million of them and it just, it's done quite well. All the fits and finishes just top notch. Uh, and that should cover most of the details of the pen. It is definitely on the light side. Maybe it's like 10, 12 grams with no ink. Very light, reasonable size, pretty good looking, maybe not quite outstanding size wise. Here's it is. Here it is next to a Sharpie. Pretty standard to a Sharpie, a little bit bigger, which you'd expect from a standard size fountain pen. Here's it next to the primary competition. This is a Platinum 3776. You could tell they, they look almost identical. Sometimes I grab one when I'm thinking I'm gonna grab the other. Here's a Lamy Safari or Vista, and obviously a much cheaper pen, but it's a good reference point for size. And lastly, you have a Lamy Studio, which is uh, in the same sort of price class as the Custom 74. So as for writing, I find this pen to be a very comfortable, very reliable writer. It's just like a real sort of workhorse for me. You grab it, it's ready to go, no skipping, and just, again, very reliable. The gold nib is very smooth. Uh, so if you like smoother nibs, this is gonna be one of the best options in the class. It's probably this and the uh, Lamy 2000. I bought this one in a medium, and it's actually a fairly generous medium. It's not like you grab it and it's down a size because it's a Japanese fountain pen. To me, it feels like maybe a really generous fine or just a solid medium. I don't grab this and think I'm writing with a, a tiny little fine. I did a couple writing samples a few minutes ago. Uh, Pilot Custom 74 Medium. You can see this is on a Tomoe River paper, so it's like uh, really, really exaggerates the uh, fountain pen qualities. Limited line variation. This is not a flex nib by any measure. It's 14K, not 18K or uh, 20K or something like that. So very limited flex, pretty solid nib for, again, reliable day-to-day -day use. So you see some ink effects, but not too much. It's really like just for doing your everyday writing. A little bit of line variation there, but it's harder than I would generally feel comfortable pushing this. You do a little bit of upside down writing, no problems with side to side. There's some slow writing, Custom 74, some really fast writing. Uh, my notes are basically super smooth nib, reliable, easy writer. And, uh, oh yeah, for pricing wise, 160 in the rhodium, and then 110, 105 in gold, 14K nib, resin body, postable. Haven't written for this in like at least 15 minutes. I'll pick it up, I've been moving it around, showing it off to you, we'll start writing. And, no problems right there, smooth writing. Pretty wet, you can see this is not like a dry or uh, too small medium. It's a nice, nice, reasonable medium. So uh, it's pretty true to size. I see a lot of people buying these in the medium and broad sizes. I think you'll be pretty happy with that for most writing. Even the broad I think is probably unnecessary unless you're looking for something really wet and more aimed at like a signature writing or a fun type of writing. I really like writing with this one. I just find that it is uh, just so easy to grab, take out of your bag, take out of your pocket and get moving. Uh, very, basically no skipping, real smooth. <clears throat> yeah, sorry about that. So yeah, I'm just scribbling here and there. Uh, it's just like a fun, reliable, smooth fountain pen. It's really kind of all there is to it. It doesn't have a lot of weird quirks or strange qualities that you might be looking for in a very expensive pen. It's just very reliable, very easy to use. 
you grab this pen and you know what you're gonna get when you start writing with it. And that's one of the reasons to get a nice workhorse pen like this. It may make it seem a little bit dull to some people or not too exciting, but you know, you don't always want something exciting. Sometimes you want a great writer and this is a type of pen that's tough to beat. <clears throat> so I definitely recommend it. Uh, I like it a lot at $105 or so. You could buy these used uh, for in that like maybe like $70, $80 price range in, in new like condition, which is nice because the pens have been made for a long time and made in pretty serious quantities, I think. So definitely check it out used if you, uh, if you trust a seller like eBay or something like that. Lastly, I will follow up this video with a comparison of the 3776 and the Custom 74. I like both the pens a lot. And uh, if you're in the market for one, you're probably considering the other. So uh, I think a video will be really interesting. So thanks for watching.